Hello chess fans and welcome to another exciting game from Mikhail Tal. This game occurs in 1956 in Mikhail Tal's first ever Soviet championship. Although he wouldn't win this championship, he would perform well and he would win this game, which was highly celebrated for its beauty. Also, next year, he would become the youngest Soviet champion at the time, and he would eventually win a record-tying six Soviet championships. The game begins e4, pawn c6 with a Karakhan defense, d4, d5. Wait, what happened to d5? It's d6. This is a mouse slip, right? Surely, surely they're going to do like a take back or something like that in this case, right? Right? Actually, this is played in the game. This isn't a mouse slip. We do get c6 and d6 on moves one and two in this position. So I think that this really colors the character of the game to come. So I want to talk about this for a moment. Now, it looks a little bit like a Karakhan, a little bit like a modern defense, but I think it's worse than either of those. The moves c6 and d6 just don't combine well and create a good kind of counterplay from black. If I had to guess, I would say that the very, very creative Grandmaster Samagin is trying to be extra creative against a young Mikhail Tao when, you know, maybe this kid just doesn't know how to respond to creativity. He didn't know yet that Mikhail Tao would be one of the most creative attackers of all time, and this would be waving a red flag in front of a brilliant, brilliant bull. So he tries C6 and D6, and let's see what happens. Knight c3, knight f6, f4, and queen b6. Uh, this also feels like some kind of mouse slip or something. I mean, queen a5 makes a lot more sense than queen b6. I just don't know how you're trying to get counterplay here. I mean, you're attacking these points, but they're really, really secure. What is the queen doing on b6? I'd rather the queen not be on here so I could maybe try something with b5 and b4. Like, maybe not right away, but people do that in the modern defense. I like some hypermodern openings myself that look kind of like this, like the hippopotamus and tigers modern, but this just doesn't seem to have any real idea to gain counterplay behind it. So you're giving Mikhail Tal a free ticket to attack. So the game continues. Knight f3, bishop g4, bishop e2, knight d7, e5, knight to d5, castles, and a trade on c3. This is another good moment to pause for... Uh, a brief bit to take stock. I think a big problem here for black is besides not having a real central presence, um, being a little behind in development, also you're just not sure what to do with your king. You're quite a few tempo away from getting castled kingside, and you're still going to get attacked if you do that. If you castle queenside, your opponent has a half open b file, and that's not going to be fun to deal with. And you can't really stay in the center. So I just don't know how black is going to try to counter white's position. And I think that there is no good way to do it. Maybe you could do better than Simagin did in the game, but you're always going to be really, really suffering. So pawn to e6. It's time to go after black before black manages to kind of close the position and get to something that's a little bit more like a French defense when being down some tempo might not matter as much. Of course, Tal senses that this is the time to go for it, and he jumps in with knight g5. Black is kind of compelled to trade here due to the fact that the bishop on g4 was hanging. And now there's a huge threat of f5. This is massive. White would breathe fire down the e file and the f file if allowed to play f5. So you need to find some way to deal with it. In the game h6 is played, I want to mention g6 for a moment. Physically stopping f5 seems like the best idea, but white has many good attacking ideas. The most straightforward and pleasing, I think, is pawn f5. Now, e takes is just really bad because you open the e file. We're going to capture here, and uh, this is crushing, very, very crushing. But also, g takes just doesn't work because of queen h5, and f7 is unfortunately a huge problem, and there's not a good way to defend it. Really, the only try that you have is knight takes e5, which is clever because of this pin, but now white has many good choices. For example, rook e1, um, pressuring the knight and pressuring e6, or the immediate knight takes e6, and the attack is just too strong. So 
In the game, realizing that g6 is not possible, Smogin tries pawn to h6, hoping to push the knight back and hold off f5 for a little while. Of course, the knight's not going back though. It's only going to be forward in a position like this, and your first instinct when you have such a strong attacking position and your opponent's king is still stuck in the middle is never to retreat an attacked piece, but to consider sacrificing it to gain time for your attack. That's exactly what we do here. Knight takes f7, the king is pretty much compelled to take, and pawn f5. As I mentioned a moment ago, the e and f files are getting opened, and black's king is a sitting duck. So there's not really any good choices available to black. This is a crushing attack, but he does go ahead and try uh, d takes. I should mention maybe that e takes f5 walks right into the fork with e6 check. You're getting your material back right here, and also your attack continues. Uh, so this is obviously very, very unappealing. So in the game, we try to capture on e5, and now there is a small mistake from Tal, uh, and I, there are two reasons I think he might have done this. Um, Queen h5 check is the strongest move in the position because after the king moves and you take on e6, the queen is in a great position, uh, ready to come at f7, for example. This is basically immediately over. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if black resigned in this position. Uh, it's just that good. I, I think that the reason that Tal didn't do this um, was probably that he really liked the continuation that he was looking at after taking with the pawn right away and keeping the queen on e2. I suspect that he had I suspect that he had seen his 15th move and thought it was too pretty to resist. Um, of course, that speculation, who knows, maybe he thought this was stronger or maybe he didn't see the strength of playing queen h5 check before taking on e6. But I kind of suspect that he had his 15th move in mind and was like, this is too good. I got to go for this. So after king takes e6, it's move 15. This is a good moment to pause your video and figure out what beautiful move Tal had prepared. He even said that it was the only difficult move in the game for him. So far, the moves have just been flowing. The correct move here is rook to b1. Very, very nice move. We're including basically the one piece that wasn't really participating in the attack. Okay, the bishop on c1 isn't doing anything at the moment, but it's ready to jump in. It has access to open lines. So we get that piece in. We're eyeing, obviously, b7 and hitting the queen. Black doesn't have a better choice than going ahead and taking on b1, but the continuation now is queen c4 check, and the king can only pick two dark squares. When it picks a dark square, we're able to give a discovered check and win the queen on b1. The game's not over, though, because black is getting pretty good material for the queen. Black is able to capture here on a3 and has a rook, a knight, and a bishop for the queen, which is sufficient material, but you should kind of always favor the queen when the opponent's king is open. And in this position, we do have a good follow-up. If we didn't have the next move, it's important to note that black should be able to consolidate and even be winning. However, queen b3 in this position hits the loose bishop and hits b7. When b7 goes, of course, black's king is going to remain exposed, and the attack should be sufficient to finish things off. Bishop retreats, queen takes. Now the king is going to run for it. We're going to kind of zip through these moves because most of them are forced. King d6. And here's a small improvement. In this position, Tal played d takes e5 check, which reminds me of his earlier capture on e6 with check. And it feels like maybe he was a little bit hasty as an attacker at this phase of his career. Um, and he continued to force the play when he had opportunities to bring more pieces in. Stronger than d takes e5 was rook d1, simply threatening to take and win material, and also threatening d5 check, uh, or d5, and this was basically going to end the game on the spot. So this was stronger than d takes e5, and I suspect that later in his career, Tal would have seen that opportunity to play a quiet move, bring the rook in, and finish things right here. So he does take on e5 check. The position is still very strong for white. Rook d1 check. The queen comes back to b3 check. The rook slides over to f1 check. We're driving the king around, 
looking for that killing blow. When the king was on e4, queen e6 was pretty good too, by the way. Pawn g4 check is now a nice move to break the coordination here. The king has to go back to f6 if it's going to continue to defend the knight. Rook f1 check, king g6, and queen e6 check. Now at this point, black realizes that uh, peace must be lost. We're attacking all of these pieces right here. Uh, let's redraw that arrow. Uh, and the only move that looks like it might defend all the pieces is bishop f6, but then we just have queen f5 check. The only legal move is king f7, and we can take here because the bishop is pinned. So no matter what black does after queen e6 check, we're going to pick off one of the minor pieces, and we are going to have a winning advantage in material. Black tries king h7, and the knight is captured here. This is a position that's just a matter of technique, but of course positions that are just a matter of technique are never easy. Technique is a hard thing in chess. Tau does start by including his, uh, maximizing his rook and queen, and then including his king, which is very creative. He's thinking of some famous king hunts, although short Taman obviously hadn't been played yet, and thinking he might march his king up the board and use it to help deliver checkmate. Bishop check, the king keeps coming. Rook e3 check, the king keep, keeps coming. Rook over to e8. Now, at this point, maybe the strongest move was queen g6. This is a computer point. As a human, at this is move 35. You're probably in time trouble. You're probably not getting more time until move 40. It would be hard for me to play queen g6 and allow this check. Uh, your king is kind of stuck here, so you have to play pawn g5, and it looks pretty dangerous. Black is getting more checks, but with this particular sequence, you can dance out of the checks and be totally winning. So queen g6 actually looks like a strong move, but I don't blame Tal at all for not going for that, and it does look like his continuation is enough to win. Instead of queen g6 in this position, he decided to give up his rook and take the g-pawn and follow it up by taking the loose bishop on c5. He gives up the rook because the rook would have been hanging if he captured the bishop on c5 right away, so why not get a pawn and wreck your opponent's king position and then take the bishop? So we might want to pause here just for a moment to assess this position. You have a queen versus two rooks. Materially, black isn't doing so badly, but objectively, this is probably decisive. The white king is actually pretty safe right here. The black king is uh, obviously massively open. You should always give some edge to the queen, I think, when the opponent's king is open. So this is a good example of where you should expect the queen to be stronger than the two rooks. And white's picking off another pawn, which will allow him a pass pawn. So he'll be able to combine pressure against the black king with a pass pawn that's pushing up the board and tying the opponent's pieces down. I think that the conclusion should be that white is objectively winning with best play. In any case, uh, Simagin didn't manage to defend and there didn't appear to be any big opportunity from here on where he could have turned it around and saved the game. So it seems like very, very nice technique from Tal who finished with a beautiful move right here, simply eliminating the rook and he's queening next turn and in this position, Samagin resigned. I'll back up just for a moment to say that after Rook here, the key point is that Black is threatening a checkmate, but by giving the Queen back, and there are other winning moves too, whether the King takes or the Rook takes, there's no more checkmate threat, so we're just queening that A pawn we've been pushing up the board, and the game is over. I hope that you enjoyed this game. Obviously, it's really nice to see a young Tal in action in his first ever Soviet championship. If you like the game and want to see more games, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to be notified of future videos, and check out the playlist that uh, is right over there on the board with more great games from Mikhail Tal.